Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Ross Miller. I'm one of the uh, co-chairs for the ACSM Biomechanics Interest Group, the, the BIG group. Um, we have four co-chairs in the group. Uh, myself, uh, Rumit Singh, who's also with me here today, and uh, Ali Gruber, the, the current uh, head of, of BIG, and uh, Max Paquette. Uh, but today, just, just uh, me and Rumit here. Um, I'm an associate professor in uh, kinesiology at uh, the University of Maryland. And uh, today, we're going to start uh, doing a new initiative here in BIG that we're hoping will we'll take off a little bit and kind of uh, broaden how often you guys hear from us as members of the group and uh, broaden the, the uh, range of topics that we cover here uh, in, in BIG concerning biomechanics in general. Hello everyone, I am Drew Singh. I'm an assistant professor of biomechanics at Old Dominion University and the co-chair of the biomechanics interest group, uh, BIG as we call it. The webinar is hosted by the Biomechanics Interest Group of the American College of Sports Medicine. Our mission is to promote biomechanics research in the college through increased participation in the annual meeting and contributions to various scholarly publications of the college. Our website, bigacsm.com, includes details of all the programming and other information, and I would like you guys to go visit it. Um, the webinar today is our first, and we hope to host many more of these in the future and increase the virtual presence of, of the BIG amongst its members and the biomechanics community at large. Um, if you have any ideas, topics, suggestions for broadening the scope of the topics and for future webinars, feel, feel, please feel free to reach out to any of our co-chairs, myself, Ross, Ali, or Max. Um, yeah, and then with this, I'll pass it over to Ross. Okay. Um, before we get started, I wanted to, to thank our sponsors this year for uh, BIG. I'm blocking some of them right now, so I will we'll duck down and see we have all of our sponsors. And uh, I'll actually change uh, change my background now so that I'm not blocking three quarters of them every time we do this here. Switch to Rumit's background here. Okay. All right. Um, so like Rumit mentioned, this is the first and what we were hoping will be a, a continued uh, seminar series on uh, some recent developments in uh, biomechanics. Um, our first uh, speakers today uh, are Chris Dembia and Nick Bianco from uh, Stanford University, who are nice enough to uh, join us and, and share their recent work with us. Um, Chris is a recent graduate from the uh, PhD program in mechanical engineering at Stanford, and uh, Nick is a current uh, PhD student in mechanical engineering, both uh, working in Dr. Scott Delp's neuromuscular biomechanics lab at Stanford. And today they are going to share with us um, some software that they've created recently for uh, doing computer modeling and simulation uh, in uh, biomechanics. And with that, I will pass it over to uh, Chris and Nick whenever they're ready. All right, yeah, thanks for the intro, Ross. Uh, I'm Nick Bianco, as Ross said. Um, I'm excited to be here today with Chris to introduce to you all uh, OpenSimMoco, a software package for creating musculoskeletal simulations using optimal control methods. We released MOCO last fall after a few years of development, and we're excited to bring it to the wider biomechanics community, including you of the ACSM. So as you all know, biomechanics has always been at the heart of advances in sports performance in medicine. Dick Fosbury revolutionized the high jumping technique uh, with a technique centered on minimizing the center of gravity height, known now as the Fosbury flop. Fred Yeadon and colleagues have used biomechanics simulation to study and improve sports performance for decades, including investigating the effect of increasing strength and velocity approach in the triple jump event. Modern biomechanics research has increasingly employed optimal control methods to generate simulations. Since these methods naturally express a wide variety of uh, motions of interest, Connor Jansen and John McPhee use direct collocation optimal control to predict the standing start commonly observed in Olympic track cycling. As you'll soon learn, MOCO also employs the method of direct collocation to generate simulations with OpenSim models. So uh, MOCO is part of the larger OpenSim project, which has been one of the most popular tools for simulating and visualizing human movement since its release in 2007. The latest version, OpenSim 4.0, allows you to generate simulations analyze results and create publication-worthy graphics all in uh, one modern graphical user interface. Uh, OpenSim has been used to study a, a wide variety of motions, including sprinting, cutting, 
uh, upper extremity devices, the standing long jump, inclined walking, gait disorders like crouch gait, uh, eye movements, one of our creepier applications, exercise equipment for astronauts, and drop landings on uneven surfaces. So OpenSim at its core is a musculoskeletal simulator, and this diagram shows how we think about OpenSim as uh, biomechanics researchers. On the left hand of the diagram, we start with neural commands that either generated by an optimizer, controller, or ex experimental EMG drives the dynamics of muscle force generation. And these forces create moments about the joints based on the model's musculoskeletal geometry. And these moments, in combination with external loads like ground reaction forces, create joint and body accelerations, which we can then integrate to visualize a motion. So in addition to the simulation tools, OpenSim is a repository of models. And um, these models are created and shared by our users for studying both human and animal movement. For example, you can find models for simulating ankle injuries, crouch gait and cerebral palsy, shoulder and scapular movements, and even animal movements like ostrich running. These models allow you to hit the, hit the ground running with, when you get started with OpenSim. So we think about simulation methods lying on a spectrum. On one end are methods in which we prescribe an observed motion. In the middle are methods in which we track an observed motion, which means we allow the simulation to deviate from observed experimental data. And on the far end, we predict the motion without using any motion data as a reference. As we move from the left to the right end of the spectrum, these methods tend to take longer. Our field has numerous tools for the left end of, left end of the, the spectrum where we prescribe experimental data and solve for muscle activity based on that data. These tools are relatively fast, but usually do not permit much customization. On the right end of the spectrum, you can use the recently re released SCONE software to easily define predicted motion problems. SCONE is very customizable, but getting a solution may take uh, several hours. So what about the middle of the spectrum? This is where OpenSim Moco comes in. MOCO is designed to solve problems along most of the spectrum, including tracking motion, and is designed to be flexible and fast. While tools like SCONE may better handle problems at the extremes of the spectrum, MOCO makes it easier than ever before to define and solve problems along most of the prescribed to predicted spectrum. So to illustrate some of these methods, I'll, um, to illustrate, I'll describe some of the existing methods that we use. Computed muscle control is a commonly used tool in OpenSim for generating prescribed motion problems. And it works by generating uh, dynamically consistent muscle forces using a series of short forward simulations while tracking experimental data. It's very fast, uh, taking only about 10 minutes to simulate walking for a model with up to 80 muscles. However, uh, like I said, it relies on experimental motion data, so it cannot predict new motions. The optimization criteria, which we use to solve for muscle forces, are fixed, and um, we can't optimize any parameters in the model. As an alternative, uh, people have used a, a method called single shooting. This method is, is widely used because um, it's able to predict new motions, um, but can also handle flexible optimization criteria and can optimize model parameters. The downside here is that these types of Methods can take very long to solve, up to 10 hours for an even simpler model than the one that we described for CMC. And this is partially because an entire uh, forward simulation must be gener generated every time the optimizer is evaluated in these types of methods. So to improve speed, other fields such as uh, aerospace engineering and robotics have been using the method direct co-location. This method provides benefits of single shooting, but can also simulate walking with a model containing 80 muscles in about 30 minutes. So why is this method so much faster? Well, in direct collocation, the optimizer now also guesses values for the model's states. Uh, so this is the joint positions and speeds and any values associated with the muscle activation or tendon compliance dynamics. 
The simulation is presented as constraints in the optimization problem so, so that it's no longer a black box like in single shooting. This video here illustrates the optimization. As you can see, the intermediate iterations uh, in contrast to sing single shooting do not look physical. The recollocation simultaneously minimizes the optimization criteria as it reduces the physics error. Placing the simulation uh, inside the optimization helps direct, direct location reach a solution quicker. So as a result, some pioneering biomechanics have explored direct collocation to generate a wide variety of simulations. It's been used to predict running and walking motions. Others have used direct collocation to estimate only muscle activity using a fixed motion, so that a prescribed motion problem. Um, or sometimes we would call this the muscle redundancy problem. So this is similar to existing OpenSim tools, but the difference here is that direct collocation uh, makes creating these types of problems uh, even faster and more flexible than before, meaning we can include any muscle dynamics that we're interested in, and we can also specify the cost function and constraints to our liking. Direct collocation has also been used in robotics in this example, modeling the contact between the robot and its environment, robotics employ what's called a kinematic constraint. They've accomplished this diff difficult task of including kinematic constraints into direct collocation. Yet direct collocation has not been widely adopted to study human movement in the biomechanics community. Uh, and why is that exactly? Well, unfortunately, the same reason that direct, that the, um, for the same reasons that direct collocation is fast, it also makes it challenging to implement. Um, bookkeeping of all the derivatives of the physics constraints um, and all of the indices uh, when you're specifying the constraints of the optimizer can be tedious and error prone in many situations. And since we're doing gradient based optimization with direct collocation, models must be tailored to this method so that they're smooth and differentiable at all times. Um, but uh, this is where MoCo comes in. MoCo uh, handles all of these details for the user and makes this powerful method easy to use for anybody. Um, and we also provide uh, smooth, and uh, smooth and differentiable models uh, designed for direct collocation so you don't have to uh, create these models yourselves. So what does MoCo do? This graphic illustrates the common inputs and outputs to the MoCo software package. The inputs to MoCo are uh, an open sim model and optionally some additional motion data. So motion data includes motion capture marker trajectories, joint angles, or force plate data. The outputs are control signals like muscle excitations and any model parameters you might want to optimize. And if you're tracking, uh, or predicting a motion, MoCo will also produce a new motion. MoCo performs its simulations using optimization. Accordingly, MoCo simulations involve cost terms such as control effort or tracking a motion uh, and any additional constraints. So with these elements, we can pose a wide variety of problems. And we like to think of four big classes of problems that MoCo can solve. For example, we might estimate muscle forces that produce an observed motion, or we might estimate the values of model parameters such as mu muscle strengths while fitting experimental data. Uh, instead of in inputting a, an observed motion, we might predict a new motion without using data. And lastly, we might seek the optimal parameters of an assistive device to achieve a desired objective, such as running as fast as possible. So Mo MoCo can handle this wide variety of problems easily. MoCo provides two main contributions to the field of biomechanics. First, MoCo makes direct collocation accessible to researchers who don't have the expertise to implement it themselves. Uh, this graph shows a results of a literature search for computed muscle control and for direct collocation in biomechanics. Computed Muscle Control was published in 2003 and became popular after it was made freely in 2007 as part of OpenSim. The first use of direct collocation in biomechanics actually predates computed muscle control. 
even though direct collocation is more powerful, it's not as popular because it hasn't been accessible. Designing a tool for direct collocation is a challenge because the method can handle a wide variety of problems. Uh, but now with MoCo, direct collocation is finally accessible, uh, which we hope will have a huge impact in the field. The other main contribution is that we can model kinematic constraints with uh, MoCo. Um, modeling the anatomy of uh, modeling human anatomy can require complex kinematic constraints that, for example, constrain the motion of the patella based on the knee uh, the knee joint angle. MoCo contains a method borrowed from robotics that allows biome biomechanists to use kinematic constraints with direct collocation for the first time. MoCo also unifies the field existing pro progress into one tool. This includes specifying skeletal and muscle dynamics as implicit differential equations, which are important for computational speed. We provide models of muscles and foot ground contact that are differentiable and smooth. And uh, lastly, MoCo can solve problems involving only muscles and not the skeleton, which is a faster approach than when predicting a new motion is not necessary. Um, rather than have, having users re-implement or relearn these necessary technical details for performing simulations with direct collocation, MoCo provides these modeling and pro problem formulation options to, to the users from the start. When you use MoCo, we want you to have confidence that you're getting good answers, so we have an extensive testing suite. Here's one small example of a test to ensure that direct collocation and time-stepping simulations enforce the same dynamics. We used MoCo to predict the optimal trajectory to move a point mass from a prescribed initial position to a prescribed final position using three, three muscles shown here in the red lines. So on the left is the predicted optimal trajectory in gray, and on the right are the activations of the three muscles throughout the motion. Next, we use the predicted muscle excitations to drive forward, uh, to drive a forward simulation of the same system, and we obtained the same trajectory on the left. The fact that the blue and gray curves line up gives us confidence that MoCo does not indeed force the same dynamics. Our tests extend uh, far beyond this example. We have an automated test suite of over 30 files with many tests that we run before making any changes to the software. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Chris to take you the rest of the way. Thanks, Nick. Can you hear me all right? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm Chris. Uh, so now that Nick has given you some background on MoCo, I'll give you a sense of how you would use MoCo yourself, and I'll show you what we've already uh, accomplished with MoCo. So MoCo solves optimal, uh, optimization problems in which we minimize some optimization criteria subject to a model's physics and other constraints and uh, with respect to model states, controls, and parameters. With MoCo, users assemble these parts with pre-existing modules. For example, MoCo contains modules for tracking measured data, such as joint angles, marker data, or control signals like muscle activity. And MoCo also contains modules for minimizing the duration of a motion, the loading in a joint, and control effort. The physics or dynamics in the problem are determined by an OpenSim model, and this includes skeletal and muscle dynamics. Uh, MoCo supports boundary constraints, which can be used to enforce that a motion is periodic or symmetric, and to require a certain average speed across the motion. Lastly, MoCo allows you to enforce a constraint at each time point in the motion, motion or this is what's called the path constraint. Uh, and this includes kinematic constraints that Nick mentioned earlier, such as for the patella, and also includes requiring that muscle activity is within some range of measured muscle activity, such as um, electromyography measurements. The variables in the problem depend on the model and include joint angles, muscle activation, muscle excitation, and any model parameters that should be optimized, such as the stiffness of a muscle. MoCo's modularity enables the software to handle a wide range of problems with little effort on your part. MoCo has different interfaces depending on the kind of problem you want to solve. I've brought back the spectrum of simulation methods that Nick introduced. If you want to prescribe a motion, then you would use MoCo's inverse tool. The inputs to this tool are 
uh, an OpenSIM model and the data you want to prescribe. The outputs are muscle controls and states. If you want to track a motion, then you use MOCO's track tool. The inputs are the same as before, but now we get a new motion as an output. The inverse tool is usually faster than the track tool, but the track tool lets you predict changes to the observed motion. If you want to predict an entirely new motion without any motion data, then you would use the MOCO study interface. This is a more complex interface that allows for more customization, um, but also requires more expertise to use effectively. Uh, as some background, the other tools actually use a MOCO study internally to pose their more specific problems. So now I'll dive into a bunch of examples showing you uh, what these tools can do. So first I'll show how we've used MOCO inverse to estimate muscle activity in normal walking. The constraints are the walking motion we've prescribed and muscle activation and fiber dynamics. The fiber dynamics require an additional state variable for the tendon force in these muscles. That's, that this is similar to a fiber length state variable that you might uh, see when using OpenSim. And here, this video shows the activity of the muscles determined by MOCO, where a muscle turns red when it's active. And just to emphasize again, the motion itself has been prescribed. It's not an output of MOCO. The output of MOCO here is really just the color of the muscles. Next, we wondered how muscle coordination would change if we, were, if we included a cost term for knee joint loading. This change required just a few additional lines of code to add a new term to our cost function. Um, and when we used this new cost term, we found that MOCO uh, decreased activation of the gastrocnemius muscle and to compensate increased activation of the soleus muscle. So this, this uh, change in coordination makes sense because the gastrocnemius crosses the knee joint, but the soleus does not. But we needed to increase the soleus activation to restore the previous ankle net joint moment. Extrapolating from this example, you can imagine using custom objectives in MOCO inverse to develop muscle coordination strategies that achieve other, uh, other goals or objectives, such as reducing injury risk. Moving along our spectrum at the top, we next use MOCO to track a walking motion. We use the MOCO track tool, which includes a cost term for tracking reference kinematics. We solved two problems, one with normal muscle strengths and one in which we weakened the dorsiflexor muscles. By comparing the motion with the weakened model in red to the motion with the normal model in green, we can see that weakening the dorsiflexors caused a drop foot gait if you look closely at, at the toes during swing. Next, we solved a motion prediction problem for walking. This time, we did not use any experimental motion data. We minimized the sum of cubed muscle excitations. The exponent uh, on excitations is a setting of this cost module for uh, control effort. We simulated half a gait cycle um, and added constraints to ensure that the motion was symmetric and periodic. We also added a constraint that the model must walk at a certain average speed. This example was created by Antoine Felice. Uh, I'll play the video again. So this problem solves in under 30 minutes. And with MOCO and this example, open some users now have free access to predictive simulations of walking that solve rapidly. MOCO can simulate more than just walking. Here's a prediction of a squat to stand motion in which we've optimized the stiffness of a knee exoskeleton, though we don't visualize a knee exoskeleton, so you can't see it. Um, uh, but this example, which comes with the MOCO distribution, is, illustrates how you can use MOCO to optimize parameters in a model. I'll show you two more problems that involved loosely tracking kinematics data for normal walking using an altered model to predict uh, new slightly altered kinematics. This scheme allows us to predict new motions, but still use the normal walking data to inform the solution. In this case, we reduced the coefficient of friction uh, of the ground. Uh, as a result of reducing the coefficient of friction, MOCO produced a gate that took much smaller steps. This problem solved in about an hour. In this last demo, we reproduced a result by Tan Vandenberger and Marco Ackerman. We examined the effects of reducing gravity down to the moon's gravity. And if you look closely, you can tell the model is not walking because there's a flight phase where neither foot touches the ground. Uh, and um, so MOCO produced this skipping gate that resembles how astronauts actually moved on the moon. 
So that's all for showing you what we have done with Moco. It's time to talk about what you can do with Moco. We released, hi, hi, Iman. We released the first version of Moco in November of last year. Uh, Nick and I publicized the release of the software on the Boom podcast, Biomechanics in Our Mind. Uh, this podcast is hosted by our lab mates, Melissa and Hannah. If you want to learn more about the history of the project, um, we encourage you to check out this podcast episode. Before MOCO, only a dozen or so biomechanists were using this powerful direct collocation method. In the last few months, MOCO has been downloaded over 500 times around the world. I'll show three examples of what some of these researchers are doing. Brian Umberger in Michigan generated this simulation to estimate muscle activity during chimpanzee walking. So this was using the MOCO inverse tool. Aaron Fox predicted a reaching movement without relying on experimental data and is about to publish a paper using MOCO for upper extremity movements. And this is using MOCO study to do a prediction. Lastly, I'll show an example from Ross Miller, who generated the first MOCO simulations of running and shared his success on Twitter. So Brian, Aaron, and Ross got MOCO working with their own models and motions in a matter of weeks, which is a testament to MOCO's ease of use. To help you get started using MOCO, we provide an extensive suite of examples. MOCO comes with examples in MATLAB, Python, and C++. We'll even show you right now um, one of these examples. I'll show you a simplified version of the squat to stand prediction I showed earlier. So um, let's see. Give me a second. All right, so here I have MATLAB open. And on the left, I have a script called example squat to stand answers. This comes with MOCO. And uh, I'll start off by running the script. And while it's running, I'll explain what the script does. So the first part of the script is it creates, it, uh, it is the creation of OpenSim models, uh, one that's torque driven and one that's muscle driven. And uh, we'll skip the details of how we create the model because the, the point is that usually when you use MOCO, you, you are bringing your own existing OpenSIM model. Uh, so the first step to using MOCO is usually to create a MOCO study. The MOCO study contains within it uh, what we call a MOCO problem that lets you specify an OpenSIM model to use to specify the physics for your direct collocation problem. The next big step is to specify bounds on your variables. So there's a function set time bounds that lets you specify bounds on the, on the initial time and the final time of your motion. And that's important if you wanna solve a minimum time problem. Then we uh, set information for the bounds for each individual state variable. So here we're sending bounds for the hip, knee, and ankle angles. And uh, the arguments here are the bounds we want over the entire motion, then the bounds we want on the initial time and bounds on the final time. So based on these bounds, we've specified a boundary value problem where we have a fixed initial state and a fixed final state, and we want MOCA to solve for the trajectory to get us from that initial state to the final state. Here we've used a, a convenient syntax in MOCO to set bounds on all speed variables, all, all uh, generalized speeds, in one call, and we want to start and end at rest. The next step in setting up a, a MOCO study is to add goals or cost terms to your problem. And here we have just one, one uh, objective, which is to minimize control effort. Once you're done configuring your problem, you invoke a function on study, the MOCO study called init Kasadi solver. There's actually two different solvers. The one we'll talk about for now is just Kasadi. And once you initialize the solver, you can set solver settings like the number of um, or the, the, the number of mesh intervals in your problem and um, some optimizer settings such as convergence tolerances. Once you're done setting those options, you simply call solve on the study and that gives you a solution that you can write to a file and load in the OpenSIM GUI. And you can also visualize the solution. And so I'll show you that now. I think. Try again. You may have to switch your uh, screen share to that window. 
the visualizer window? I, yeah, it didn't even come up. Okay. I think I, I think I know why. This is the output from IPOPT, which is the nonlinear optimization algorithm we're using to solve the problem. Can you see this window now? Can you see the emotion? We still no. see MATLAB. Okay. Here we go. There it is. Yeah, okay, great. Thanks, Ross. So this is a window that pops up when you call this visualize function, and it shows the animation of your uh, MoCo solution. So uh, that's, a, that's a quick preview of how you can actually use MoCo in MATLAB. I'll head back to the slides now. Okay. All right, you should see the, the squat to send demo slide, blank slide. Yep. All right, so as you can see, MoCo allows you to predict motions with a pretty easy to use interface. So Nick and I believe that MoCo is broadly applicable within sports medicine. MoCo can be used to estimate muscle activity for observed athletic activities, to design strategies that reduce injury risk, and to discover new ways to perform athletic activities. That I'm thinking back to that Fosbury flop. Uh, so um, I hope that Nick and I have showed you how with MoCo, predicting new movements is easier than ever before. We also can learn a lot from the sports medicine community. Uh, we'd like to hear which research questions you hope to answer with musculoskeletal simulations and which simulation capabilities you think you need most. And hopefully we can chat about that during the Q&A. So to wrap up, Today we talked about how direct collocation is a method that's well suited to many biomechanics problems. And we showed how MoCo is designed to handle many biomechanics problems by giving you uh, access to the direct collocation method. And lastly, we showed you that MoCo is easy to use. So how do you get started? I encourage you to visit our website, opensum.stanford.edu slash MoCo, where you can uh, download the software and also find a preprint on the software that you can read to learn more information. Uh, before we wrap up, I'd just like to emphasize that MoCo and OpenSim are part of the community, belong to the community. We have an open source license that lets you freely share, modify, and extend MoCo. Um, we also encourage you to make your work accessible. With MoCo, uh, we've designed MoCo with, uh, the, with keeping in mind that we want it to be easy for you to reproduce and extend uh, your research or other people's research. Uh, and we also encourage you to contribute code and examples. MoCo is developed publicly on GitHub and you can open a pull request to contribute anything you'd like. I'd like to acknowledge the team working on OpenSim, including Nick, Antoine, Felice, Carmichael Ong, Ayman Habib, Jen Hicks, and Scott Delp. I'd also like to acknowledge our funding sources. Thanks for listening. All right, thanks guys. Should I stop the share? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and stop the share. All right, that was great. Um, thanks for for sharing your work with us. It's very impressive. I've I wouldn't say I've used me personally Moco a lot, but I've used it a, a moderate amount, and it's I I can't stress enough how much easier it is to use and more versatile and straightforward than than the way I was doing things. I I, I don't know if I can speak for all direct colocation users, but it's it's really. I can never see going back to doing it the way that I was doing it previously. So it's, it's really been, for me personally, a, a major boost in what I'm able to do. And I think a lot of people have that same experience once, it, once it's more widely adopted. Uh, so I thought we'd just do a little open Q&A, uh, just back and forth, if, if you guys can stick around. Yeah. Cool. Um, you touched on a lot of what I was going to ask already. But what, in general, what was your motivation for creating MoCo? I'd imagine this is, is quite a bit of work and hours on top of you know, doing your own dissertation research and whatnot. So what, what, what was your motivation or, or goals in creating it? Nick, you want to start while I take a breath? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, well, we've done, Chris and I have both contributed to uh, a lot of the advanced user workshops that we've hosted at Stanford. and. Um, in those workshops, we have a lot of users that come in and 
want to do a very specific research application that kind of bends or breaks the capabilities of what the existing OpenSIM tools could do. We just continually found that OpenSIM's existing tool set was not as flexible as our advanced or even the common user um, needed them to be. Um, and at the same time we were doing this, we've seen direct collocation become more and more common, but only accessible to a small group of people. And I think the, the main idea of MoCo is to bridge that gap and, and make these tools accessible. And um, last year we were able to do kind of a pre-release at our first workshop with the code. And um, we had some users just uh, do some really cool stuff in a couple of days with it. And it, um, that was really exciting. And um, yeah, we hope that for users that need this flexibility in defining um, these complex simulations that MoCo can be the first place they go uh, to try that. Yeah. I'll, I'll give uh, an example of like, so Nick is talking about what these workshops are like now that we have MoCo and with this pre-release of MoCo we used last year. In a previous workshop, I think the year before that, uh, someone came wanting to an open sim workshop wanting to simulate uh, walking, uh, a, a child walking with an exoskeleton for crouch gate to help with crouch gate. And um, our suggestion to them was maybe you can simulate, just do a forward simulation of the, of the swing phase of walking. But they really wanted to study all of walking, but we kind of gave this kind of workaround, simple solution. So they had this choice between solving this problem that they didn't, wasn't really the problem they wanted to solve, or writing their own single shooting algorithm in MATLAB. Um, and I don't think that was, that, that choice was very uh, satisfying. Um, and I think MoCo kind of really just addressed, like now, if this person wanted to study an exoskeleton for walking with CrouchGate, MoCo can really do that. A huge benefit of it for me has just been the convenience of working with OpenSim models and the ease of changing them. Um, like a, Mo MoCo comes with a great deal of examples for using the various tools, but it also comes with like models you can start from. And so for me, that was a, a big uh, speed boost, I would say, in getting started with it is starting from like an existing 2D example of predicting walking. It's relatively easy to scale that up to like a a more complicated model also predicting walking, you know, adding muscles and degrees of freedom. The, the, the way that I was doing that previously, adding like a single degree of freedom to the model was a massive undertaking and headache and an open sim, it's, you know, takes 10 seconds. So that's, that's really a big advantage here, I think. Yeah, um, so you guys, you guys talk about how the time constraints have reduced quite a bit. Uh, so what, what, are the, what are the computational resources that go with it like, and the programming skills that are needed uh, to jump from a 10 hour simulation to a 30 minute simulation? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start. So um, when, I, when I joined this lab, our, lab, our research lab, um, there were two postdocs who were doing predictive simulations and they were doing it on uh, clusters. We were like, there was one month before a conference when they spent like $2,000 on Amazon cloud cl credits. Um, and that was to run a simulation that had, like had 32 parallel processes. And that, that took about 10 or 15 hours to, to solve. Um, Nick and I do use MoCo a little bit on a cluster uh sometimes because there is a benefit to parallelization like you these problems are fairly parallelizable so you might ideally have like 8 to 16 um parallel cores um but we we do all our we predominantly use our laptops or our uh, desktop computers um and so all the timing information we gave was was on like a a 3 year old kind of desktop and some of these problems, like the uh, 2D predictive simulation example Chris showed that Antoine and Felice developed, it's a fully predictive simulation example that you can run in less than an hour on an average laptop, um, which, um, yeah, I think is a huge opportunity for anyone can just kind of open their laptop and run that example and modify it. And um, yeah, you can kind of start at whatever level of complexity you want to for whatever resources that you have. Uh, you also mentioned coding experience. Um, we designed MoCo um, kind of similarly to the 
the OpenSim MATLAB API interface. So if you're familiar with using OpenSim in MATLAB, then you'll be comfortable using MoCo. Um, but if you're new, if you're new to programming, um, we try to build our documentation as clearly as we can to make getting started with all the modules in MoCo as clearly as possible. Um, so you uh, don't have to get into the C++. You can can do pretty much everything you need to do right in MATLAB. My uh, awesome. my story on the computation yeah. time and what kind of inspired me to start using this method was um, when the when the 2010 Ackerman and Vandenberger paper came out, so a paper by Tom Vandenberger and Marco Ackerman, they published in 2010. What wasn't the first biomechanics optimal control study, but I think it was the first one that kind of brought it to the wider attention of the field. Um, I, I was reading and I was like, wow, that's really cool. And I, so I emailed Tan and asked, uh, like, what, what kind of cluster did you run this on? And he was like, oh, this is on a single desktop computer. And I was like, oh, really? And, and th at that time, I was running, like, these simulations that took 5,000 hours spread out over, like, 100 cores on a <laughs> on a cluster and like you guys said burning thousands of dollars of you know <laughs> funded hours to to generate this like oh maybe i should start doing it this way and so it's, it's yeah it's, absolutely it's I'm, I, I'm thinking of my my students working at home right now and they don't have access to my lab to the lab computers right and you could have powerful lab computers but not everyone has a laptop that, or a desktop that's that's that powerful in terms of compute computational resources uh so Keep students sitting at home, us sitting at home, can if we can do okay forward the work uh, on our on our desktops and laptops that are probably not connected to course and stuff. So that's very helpful. On the OpenSim team, we seem to have noticed an uptick in the amount of the amount of posts we get to our forum mm -hmm. for, for OpenSim generally, and we think that might be because people are uh, now focusing a little bit more on simulation based work. Sure. And a little bit, uh, the question about uh, computational resources reminds me of a talk that Ross, you gave at ISB in 2015, where you were talking about how with direct allocation, we can really start doing population level studies. Predictive simulations have been limited to generic models, like one off, um, but uh, we can now solve those quicker, but that also allows us now, if we want, if we have access to a cluster to, to do sensitivity analyses, to look at whole populations in a predictive way. Mm -hmm. Brian Umberger always says these, these will never be fast. We'll just start using, you know, progressively more complex models that take as yeah. long as we're willing to tolerate. So I think that's a, it's a good example of that. You can, you know, do a lot more of the same complexity level or a, a more complex level in, in less time than would take you otherwise. Um, I was going to ask um, uh, an open sim question. So this is kind of a two part question. Um, so I'll just ask the first part. Do you, do you view MoCo as like an extension of OpenSim or is it more of kind of its own separate thing? Like, is this something, well, I think when most people think of OpenSim, they don't think of like the, you know, the library of commands you call up in MATLAB. They think of like the GUI that you download and, you know, run CMC through like graphical interfaces and stuff like that. Is Do, do you envision MoCo being a part of that, you know, the GUI based application someday or is it just kind of mostly be its own separate thing at least for now? We, from the start, always envisioned as MoCo as part of the OpenSim project, um, and I mean by by design, the 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 only way you can prescribe your system dynamics is through an OpenSim model. So there's really no way around of using OpenSim. Um, and uh, the more OpenSim modeling knowledge you have, the the more it'll help you using MoCo when you're trying to run these problems. For now. Uh, users will interface with MoCo through the scripting interface, like script, uh, like Chris showed um, for the squat to stand demo. Um, but in the future, um, we would we would love to have it as part of the GUI. Um, um, we kind of think as MoCo is like when you when you load the GUI and you go to the drop down menu of like inverse kinematics, inverse dynamics, all those tools. Um, MoCo will be part of that suite of tools that. Um, can be accessible to, to anybody. And the, the tools that Chris talked about earlier, MoCo Inverse, MoCo Track, those tools are designed to feel and feel like an open sim, like a CMC tool where you provide a model, you pro provide a few settings, uh, maybe some integrator information, and then you can just run it. Um, so if people want to interface with MoCo on that level, it, that's definitely there. Um, but then we have we've exposed the the generic problem building interface so advanced users can get as far into the details as they want to get 
to to make their problem so yeah i think people will prefer if they're creating the generic moco study and not using the moco inverse or moco track they'll probably be in matlab there i think we kind of have a dream of having a a gui based tool to graphically assemble that kind of problem but i don't think there's really a timeline for that um so I have a more specific question. Um, in your last slide, you asked for other ideas and topics and stuff. Uh, so my lab's working on multi-segmental trunk mechanics. And uh, a lot of what OpenSim models and MoCo models out there are more for the extremities, lower extremities or upper extremities. Um, what suggestions do you have? How do you think MoCo will be helpful? Or what are the limitations? Uh, well, one one thing is, at least I, I know of at least one kind of like spinal model that it that you leverages pretty heavily kinematic constraints, mm -hmm. and um, so we we knew that it would be important to include support for kinematic constraints if if people want to feel like they can use Mocha with any OpenSim model, and so that the spine is one place where um, I'm I'm like I'm happy that we we have the support for kinematic constraints because these spinal models usually do have uh constraints that like the joint angle between two vertebrae uh determines the joint angle between the next two vertebrae or something like that um we don't i don't know of anybody who's already used moco for um oh Dario Cazola, i think used it for his neck model yeah in, in the workshop last year yeah and aaron fox just regarding like upper extremity work Aaron Fox is about to publish a paper with Moko using the shul his shoulder model. Um, actually in, in a lot of ways the upper extremity can be simpler because you don't have to deal with ground contact um, which is usually the source of discontinuous modeling. Um, so yeah there's a uh, naturally just more people studying the lower extremity, but there's nothing in the design of MoCo that makes it harder to use upper extremity models. If you're talking about the the kind of the, the spine, and if there, we haven't used, I don't think we've used MoCo too much with models that have a lot of pa passive elements like ligaments. I'm not sure how, mm -hmm. how prominently those feature in your model. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious how MoCo will handle a model with a lot of passive elements. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't think we have gotten to a point where we will include the passive structures okay. just yet. Uh, but we're trying to go for simulations of just the muscles around the trunk because even that hasn't yet been studied, not to my uh, knowledge. Yeah. I've used it with uh, passive torques, kind of representing, you know, like joint level uh, combined ligament effects, and it it handles that just fine. I haven't I haven't tried modeling like a like a ligament as like a, you know, like a like a line, like a you know, like a force actuator. Yes. Okay, that's good to know. We're we're learning. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that answers all my questions. Rumit, did you you have anything else? Uh, no, I, I think uh, that was that was super informative. Like, uh, we appreciate you guys joining us and uh, giving us a tour, a virtual tour of uh, of Moco and uh, telling us more about the software. Uh, we'll we'll make sure to include resources and links to the OpenSim page or um, if you have anything else uh, feel free to send it to us we'll try to put them in the resources uh, Absolutely. when we publish one thing i just thought of um since we were talking about your specific example Ramit, is we do have office hours um if you go to the website you can find a form um if you describe the problem that you're trying to solve with moco and what you tried and what doesn't work, um, we'll look it over and we'll schedule a 30 minute Zoom call with you and we can give you some one-on-one -on -one, uh, advice on how to use MoCo so that um, that is uh, available for, for those who are interested. The, uh, awesome. the forum has also been super helpful, at least for me, for, for troubleshooting. Anytime I get, I'm, I'm not really much of a MATLAB OpenSim expert, so I get stuck on that a lot and anytime I can't get it to do what I want. I just post something on there and one of you two or Aaron or somebody that knows better can usually answer it. And I'm usually up and running again within a day. So that, that's another great way to, to get help. Awesome. Yeah, and thank you, Ross, for your contributions to that forum too. You've, you've oh, answered I, people's questions. Thank you. I try, thanks. I see, I see Amon joined us here. Amon, you wanna make any remarks? 
Uh, yeah, no, it was uh, great to have uh, Chris on board. Of course, he's, uh, he's kind of moving on, but uh, before that, he already made his uh, mark on the OpenSim community, so that is great, and we still have Nick around, so that's uh, exciting and great to see you guys uh, making use of MoCo. And uh, I, I would just say, in terms of integration of MoCo and OpenSim, the long-term plan is definitely to integrate at the for the time being, because we can't run all these problems in interactive mode, we kind of the next step after we do integration is to uh, probably make a tool to define your method or your problem in the GUI, but then run it in the background or on a cloud or run it somewhere else yeah. because it's not really interactive speed at this point. Or we carve out some subset of problems that we can solve interactively and. But it is definitely on our radar to kind of, uh, we are doing the integration between MoCo and OpenSim. So you should treat it as part of OpenSim kind of future. That's kind of what I was thinking too in terms of, of interactive use. Like th there are things you could set up in MoCo that would take like 40 hours to run, right? And I don't think that's really what people are expecting when they pop up the GUI and click run. But there are also things that can take seconds or minutes, which, which would be well suited for that. So. Yeah, absolutely. We, we are hoping that rather than downloading MoCo as a separate package, that you just download OpenSim and it contains MoCo. Sure. Awesome. Cool. OK. Um, I think that will wrap it up for our first uh, biomechanics, uh, ACSM Biomechanics Interest Group uh, webinar slash seminar here. Um, I'll, I'll thank our sponsors again. You can, can see them on Rumit's uh, slide down there. And uh, we'll move, move, move out so that you, people can see it. <laughs> thanks, thanks uh, Nick and Chris and uh, Amon for joining us today. And we will see you next time. Thank you, Rumit. Thank you, Ross. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you man.